welcome to Cannes, the most prestigious, the most glamorous film festival in the world. And let me tell you, it has started with a bang. For the first time ever, it opened with an animation, or what some might say is a fancy cartoon. It's called Up, and last night on the red carpet, all the stars were there to see the world premiere. And oh, what a fabulous, uplifting, and optimistic start. Bonjour, France 24. Bonjour. Can rose to great heights with the film Up by Pete Docter. As you're making the movies, you know, you're, you get so close to it and you lose perspective. Is this good or I don't yeah. know? And then, you know, show it and, and get such a great response. It's really flattering. It's the 10th animated movie by Pixar, but the first time such a film has the privilege to open the Cannes Festival. Where are we? got to give Pixar credit for believing in it and for encouraging it all the way along. Like, I can't imagine going to Hollywood and saying, all right, I got this yeah. great pitch for you. An old man flies his house into the sky, and you're, I think we'd get kicked out. Yeah, we would. So, we would. Uh, <laughs> the fact that they believed in it and continued uh, to, to, to work it and, and really push us to make it better kicked in a lot of great ideas along the way. It's never too late to fulfill your dreams. That's the main character's message. This is this old guy holding a beautiful bouquet of balloons. It it's made us laugh. Happy, fun, pink, colorful, smiley but face. He's mad, he's you know. <laughs> yeah, Walter Matthau, Spencer Tracy, we looked at a lot of old stuff. He had that great curmudgeon but charm and you like, yeah. you like your grandfather, you know. So it's sort of the greatest hits of all our old timers, you know, in this one character. The 78-year-old protagonist, who was dubbed in France by singer Charles Aznavour, goes on an extraordinary trip that takes him to South America. The young Russell shares the adventure with him. He's a pest who'll help the old man discover the world in his true self. Good afternoon. I think in this day and age it's very easy to be off by yourself in your room and forget what the world is really about. It's all about those yeah. small moments, those connections between each other that make life worth living. And I do believe in that, I think, as a theme. I think, you're right, the world, everything's fast, 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 and we, I don't know, we want people to stop and slow down just for a minute, and that's why I feel strong about this film. Up is an inspiring film that appeals to the adventurer that lives inside each of us. Oops. Up isn't in the competition, but 20 films this year are up for the Palm Door. And there are some serious heavyweight directors among the mix. It's going to be a tough choice for the nine members of the jury. The jury this year is presided over by Isabelle Huppert, the French star. Also among the jury members is Robin Wright Penn, the US actress. Well, alongside the competition is, of course, Director's Fortnight, often thought to be the most radical can subsection. It's here sometimes that the films become the talk of the town. Well, earlier, Elizabeth Chungi met the man in charge, Olivier Père. Every year on the Quasette, you're going to come across festival goers who are going to say, in any event, the festival, the Cannes Festival, it's uh, really at the director's fortnight that things happen. The director's fortnight is uh, a parallel section which last year uh, celebrated its 40th anniversary and it's pulled out all the stops today. At the opening session, we have the latest film of Francis Ford Coppola, Tetro. Olivier Père, hello. You are the general manager of the director's fortnight. How did you manage to convince Coppola to come to the director's fortnight rather than going to the official selection. Did you do a, a dance of the seven uh, veils? No, in fact, everything happened very, very simply. It was all in a very normal way. Francis Ford Coppola didn't want to be invited out of competition, so he didn't want to come to Cannes. He'd planned to release his film directly in the United States. And then I simply contacted him, I called him and said, could we see the film in Paris? And he organized a screening for us. And in view of our enthusiasm, our admiration for this film, which is really an exceptional piece of work, he very quickly agreed to open the fortnight for us because he knows director's fortnight. He knows that it's a place not only for discovery but also for independence, for creativity, for liberty. All these are values to which he's very much attached, which have been in fact his hallmark for many years now in the history of cinema. So he said, OK, I'd rather be in the director's fortnight along with some younger directors. And this film is almost a new starting point. But uh, what's really surprising is that we expected to see him in the official competition. On the whole, Sometimes isn't there a bit of a battle between the competition, the official selection and the director's fortnight because you probably want to get the same films? That does happen, yes. There are some films which are in competition between different sections of the festival, whether it be the official competition and South Africa or director's fortnight. Luckily, that uh, concerns only a few films every year, maybe three or four, which are... Uh, 
which are invited uh, by several different sections in Cannes. We, have, uh, we are a sport for choice, in fact. In the case of Coppola, this was a different situation. He wasn't invited as part of the official competition. He didn't want to be out of competition. So uh, he was contacted by directors fortnight. And it's very important for his film to have its world premiere here in Cannes, I think. The first uh, director's fortnight took place in 1969. Can one say that the director's fortnight was born on May 68? Oh, yes, absolutely. Very directly, in fact. The director's fortnight was born out of the events of May 1968. French filmmakers wanted to get together. They formed the Film Directors Association, the SRF, and they wanted to open a window during the festival onto uh, films, authors' films, new countries, young filmmakers. At that time, of course, it was much less easy in Cannes to see the new generation, the up-and-coming filmmakers, modern cinema from all over the world. So it's true that Directors Fortnight discovered Herzog Oshima, helped Fassbinder and Angelopoulos to be recognized. And then I must say that this uh, tradition has uh, gone on. And in fact, the approach adopted by the Directors Fortnight has not changed. We've stayed very faithful to our origins with our demand, our curiosity, our passion for discovery and uh, our aim to help young directors. Last question. It's often said that the director's fortnight is like a breeding ground for the official selection. It's uh, where you go to test the train. It's true. This continues to be a springboard. It's uh, the first uh, step towards consecration because every year we welcome many, many first films, many films made by young filmmakers who've never been to Cannes before. And of course, uh, if things go well, if these young uh, filmmakers confirm their promise and make uh, good second films, which are remarkable. This opens the door either to a selection in the official competition in Cannes or in Venice, and we're very proud, in fact, of being useful in this way. Thank you very much, Olivier Perre, for having been our guest tonight, and enjoy thank, the festival. Thank you. There has been talk that this year is going to be Credit Crunch Cannes. Vanity Fair have called off their glitzy bash, and there has been rumours that instead of champagne, people are going to be drinking fizzy wine. But surely it's going to take more than a global financial crisis to take the glitz out of can by night. Ah, red carpet. When you're a star in Cannes, it just goes on and on. It leads you from your limousine to the theatre, then from the theatre to your dinner. And where there is red carpet, you parade in style and enjoy it, even when you're one of the most beautiful women in the world, like Indian actress Ashwara Rai. It's always wonderful to be here and uh, it's a family I kind of am affiliated to now, having been a frequenter at this festival. The kind of beauty that cannot leave experts, such as French actor Jean Rochefort, indifferent. Earlier I saw a woman with a typical can style plunging neckline and bra combination. And I can tell you, cinema will go on thanks to people like her. The future of cinema is indeed safe and sound. Like all good things, red carpets have an end. In this case, it is called a door, and this one is heavily guarded. Remember, we have special coverage on our website of the Cannes Film Festival. That's at france24.com. Join me again tomorrow for more glitz and glamour from the French Riviera.